My name is Don Dixon. I want to thank you for joining me this morning for another edition of our Structure Fishing Workshop. We've been breaking down the different types of lakes that exist in this country. Even though, in essence, they're all sort of the same, they do have enough differences that are worthy of discussion, and more importantly, these differences will determine just how we go about our fishing of each one of these natural lakes. Really, I wanted to bring one more thing up about a Florida-type lake. It's kind of shaped like a saucer. I call them a saucer-type lake. Now, today we're going to talk about the Great Lakes. And if someone asks me, in lay terms, we know it's, these lakes are as big as the ocean. But in lay terms, how would you describe one of the Great Lakes to me? My answer would be, well, it's a glacier-type, saucer-type lake. Now, I want you to get the connection here. Fishing Lake Ontario or, or Lake Erie, it's kind of the same as fishing out here. It's a saucer type lake. Now the difference is, Lake Erie has a couple of hundred feet in some spots. Out here, the deepest water we have in this particular Florida lake is 20 feet. In many Florida lakes, the deepest water is 14 or 15 or 16 feet deep. So you see, there's a major kind of a difference here, but you'd be amazed that in so many cases, how it ties together and is sort of the same as fishing a Florida type lake, saucer type lake. The difference is the depths, main difference. So since I met Buck Perry, I've had the opportunity to fish Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and Lake Michigan. My three years in in serving uh, as fishing consultant in the state of Illinois, I had many opportunities to fish Lake Michigan. And of course, it's mainly the cool water and the cold water species. Had a lot of success, and most all of that success, I shouldn't say most, 99.999% of all my success came from fishing brake lines. Brake lines exist in some form in every lake that there is, whether it's natural or man-made, there's always break lines. And the fish follow along these features. Even the cold water and the cool water fish relate to them and will suspend vertically above them when they become active. Break lines, a real key in fishing a saucer type lake, whether it's in Florida or whether it's up in Pennsylvania fish in Lake Erie. Now Lake Erie is the warmest and the shallowest of the Great Lakes. It's famous for its warm water species. Even though there's some salmon, there's still some, you know, in the, and I know in the winter my brother-in-law used to go up in the rivers and catch a bunch of steelhead. Uh, so there is some cold water species. But Lake Erie really is famous for its walleye, a tremendous walleye fishery. And as I already stated, I think the best smallmouth bass fishery in the world, period. Great, great, great fishery. Now, we know that there are going to be some break lines out there. We just established, just like in Lake Michigan, just not going to be as deep. But there are going to be some break lines. There's break lines in all of these lakes. Now, one of the real keys in fishing Lake Erie and in fishing Ontario, in any big uh, natural glacier lake. This can be a major key for you. And that feature I'm talking about is a reef. And I'm going to define a reef for you so you understand. I actually have a couple pictures. I'm going to show you some diagrams of what some of these reefs look like. Now in most of the Great Lakes you're not going to see any islands which means you're not going to have any underwater islands. Except there is a section in the western basin of Lake Erie where there are some islands, they're called the Bass Islands. You have South Bass, Middle Bass, North Bass Island, and when you have these above water islands, you know that you will have some underwater islands or humps existing in the same areas. So in part of Lake Erie, you have these underwater humps. And 
even on some of the maps that I've read, they refer to them as reefs. They're not reefs. They're humps. They're underwater islands. So get your terminology right. So when I talk about the importance of reefs, I want you to be able to distinguish the difference between a reef and an underwater hump. A reef is nothing more than, I guess if I could just put it here on my table, uh, we have a bunch of rocks, let's just say, from the shoreline moving out into the lake. We have a bunch of outcroppings, scattered rocks, but lots of them. This is referred to as a reef. It's a bottom condition, rocks protruding from the bottom of the lake. And in the surrounding areas of this reef, you will have normally a clay bottom or a sand bottom or a mud bottom. But in one area, moving from the shoreline on out into the deep water, you have these outcroppings of rocks on the bottom. This is referred to as a reef. Now there are two different types of reefs and I'm going to show you a couple pictures to so you can distinguish the difference between the two. In the first one we just have scattered rocks as you can see. Just looks like scattered rocks reaching out into the lake. But only in one area. That's a reef. And this is something that's identifiable to the fish, something they can follow to lead them from deep to shallow. Now in the next picture I'm showing you, it appears to be the same, but it's not. We have rocks coming out from the shoreline, coming out for a distance, and, and they're sort of scattered, and then all of a sudden, there's a real concentration of rocks that take place. That's where we have a break line occurring. And then we will have, after that break line, we will have some other scattered rocks moving out, and then all of a sudden we see another area where we have a big concentration of rocks. Again, this is where another break line is occurring. Now, this is important if you're fishing the Great Lakes. Man, when you find that situation, which I did in Lake Erie, you catch 100 fish a day, 200 fish a day, how many fish you want to catch? I'm not kidding you. It was just nuts crazy and it wasn't all that unexpected to me. I knew when I found that reef in Lake Erie, I had found my fish. The only question was, is it reached from the shoreline out into the deep water? At which break line am I going to find my fish? I had rocky reef stuff going on at each and every break line. Concentration of rocks. And the reef itself in total was probably a mile wide and maybe two or three miles out into the lake. Now, I never knew at that time, and you'll never know, at which break line they're going to be. That's going to depend on weather and water, time of the year. In the fall movements you can get some pretty shallow fish moving in. And of course early season you're going to have shallower fish. Uh, but during the bulk of the season, I don't know which break line, but I'm going to keep working until I find my fish. So you might think to yourself, well, that's a pretty big flat area there. You know? I'm three miles out into the lake. I'm a mile wide. That's a lot of water. Well, as you look at it and compared to the volume of water in Lake Erie, it's not a very big spot. And once you found that spot, you don't have to look anymore. You found your fish. You just got to get to fishing. But reefs are keys in fishing. Big, natural glacier lakes. Look for them. Once you find one, especially like the one I found where it had multiple break lines. First break line, I believe, was 17 feet. Next one was at 25 feet and so on and so forth. I got to my fish when I hit the 45 feet. But on the reef, great structures. It's the migration route that the fish use from the deep to the shallows. So when you find one, get married to it, stay with it. You found the spot. That's it for the Great Lakes. There's not a whole lot to say about them except that they are great fisheries. If you're living close, you need to fish them. And I'll, I'll end and conclude with this. Most of the people like me that fish the, basically the warm water species, 
a warm and a cool water species, not so much the cold water stuff. I don't do much of the trout stuff. I've done it in the past, but it's not my thing for the most part. Uh, but as you look at the Great Lakes or any huge natural glacier lake, sometimes when you're fishing like me and most of my people fish, we're in 15 foot boats, 16 foot boats. We're in 40 horsepower, 60 horsepower, probably the biggest. Uh, we're tiller handle guys. You know, that's that's how we go about our fishing, all species. So when fishing the Great Lakes, you might say, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm endangering myself a little bit going out there in such a small boat. So you do have to watch your weather, obviously. I know in Lake Erie, you're always looking to the Northwest because that's where it comes from. And you better get off when it starts up. Get off and get off quick. <laughs> But here's what I want to point out to you, just something you put in the back of your head. The way the glacier pushed back in the day, almost every glacier type natural lake will have the deepest water closest to the shore in the southeast section of that lake. Now why is that little simple fact important? Well. In Erie, I was loading a boat, and I wasn't but a mile offshore. Loading the boat, 46 feet of water, maybe a mile and a half at the most. But in four minutes, I could be on the bank. You know, I wasn't out there 10 miles out in my little boat. So, where the deepest water swings closest to the shore gives me my best opportunity in a small boat tiller handle to fish the Great Lakes. Now I will add one more thing. In the fall, a lot of times you get very stable weather. The wind shuts down, you got stable weather. I've been on Lake Erie where that water was like glass. I've also been in it where I thought I was going to die <laughs> with eight footers. Uh, but in the fall, you can really get a lot of great fishing and pretty darn close to the bank not literally the bank, but you're getting my point. If I'm only a mile off catching a bunch of big fish, hundreds of fish, uh, that's a good situation to be in. Much better than being 10 miles out catching 100 fish. Because then if the weather blows up real quick, which it has a tendency to do, you can get yourself in trouble. So southeast corners of the Glacier Natural Lakes will have the areas where the deepest water in that lake swings closest to the shore, which makes it more accessible for you and I to fish. So with all that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. So be sure to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done it. Thanks for being with me today, and we'll see you the next time.